Hey, how's it going? Welcome to my railroad, if you're new here, the OSCNR. And if you remember from the last layout update, um, we left off kind of before the Helix started. Uh, so that's what we're going to talk about now is the Helix itself. So as you can see, we're about halfway up and it's coming along really nicely. So what I wanted to do on this episode is just kind of go on and explain uh, how I uh, came up with it and constructed it. So if you see here, we have these risers and they're notched out. I got this idea from Roy Smith over at the Union Pacific Evanston subdivision. Great channel, I'm a big fan of his. And I really just noticed it in the background and I thought it was a really good uh, idea. Um, I liked it because basically I could keep everything a little bit tighter and have the risers in there instead of having, uh, you know, three quarter inch pieces in between. Um, so a bit of theory and how I started this out. Uh, the basic concept is between each level, I have three and a quarters of an inch. Now, how did I come up with this? Uh, I started with my NMRA gauge. Now, before you do this, remember, this standard gauge, this really goes back to about this time. So I really recommend if you're a more modern uh, railroad running uh, double stack containers and stuff like that, go on the NMRA uh, website and double check uh, the gauge heights that they uh, recommend for heights. So basically what I did, I used this gauge and I measured it and it came out to pretty well exactly three inches, give or take a sixteenth. Um, so I went with three inches, but then what I did was I measured my track and I'm using code 83 Atlas and the track ended up being about a quarter inch. So there you go, three and a quarter inch between each level. Um, so then once I figured that out, I basically just uh, took this and divided it up into four sections. I basically drew out a circle onto a piece of plywood like this and uh, this is my template that I'm using and like I said before it's a 24 inch radius uh, right in the center. So I made uh, up a whole bunch of these and one of these makes up one quarter of the circle and goes around like this. Uh, so then what I did I took three and a quarters of an inch and I divided it by four and this gives me 11 sixteenths or pretty close to 11 sixteenths. So what I did from there made sure I started with a good solid base and a little tip there I used my laser level which uh, works really good. Um, started from there with a really level base and then worked my way up. So my first rise was 11 sixteenths. The next one I believe was an inch and five eighths and went from there. Then by the time I got around to the fourth one, we're up to the three quarters, or three and a quarters of an inch, and uh, then each level from there was three and a quarters of an inch. Um, now, what I do gotta tell you, as you can see here, I'm testing the uh, passenger train, and man, am I glad I did that, because holy, have I had some problems, and I'm not gonna lie to you. I, I thought this was gonna be a little bit easier, uh, than I thought. Building it was easy, but the fine tuning was not. What I really found was um, everything had to stay exactly where it was. Uh, so when I basically divided each section up after between those 11 uh rise pieces, that had to be exact. If I was out even an eighth of an inch, it made a difference between at least two cars getting up the, uh, the grade. Um, Speaking of the grade, how did I figure that out? Well, what I'm running at is about a 2.5% grade. Now, how did I figure that out? The formula is rise over run. So I figured out the circumference of the circle. Uh, find that out by pi r squared. Your radius is obviously 24 inches. Um, your pi is 3.14. Multiply that out and you get the circumference of the circle. The circumference of the circle is one revolution, and that's one section of rising up, if that makes sense. So then what I did was I divided that by the rise. Now, I originally made the mistake of thinking that the rise was three and a quarter, but it's actually not. The rise is actually three and a quarter 
plus the half inch. So it's actually three and three quarters, if that makes sense. That's your basically track height to track height plus the thickness of the material. That's our rise. So we take the circumference of the circle, divide it by that, we come out pretty close to 2.5%, which I'm actually really happy with. I originally was expecting 3%, but something that I'm finding is the 24 inch radius. It's actually really tight and heavy uh, going on that kind of grade. I'd really recommend if you can go bigger, go as big as you can. Um, here I couldn't because I needed space. I'm, I'm in one of those situations that do I wish I went, I could have went bigger? Yes, I do wish I could have. But if I could do it over again, would I? No, absolutely not. I, I'm absolutely maxed out for space. I'm really happy with my uh, area where I have to do switching and stuff in Chesley and Parkhead. If I have two people in there, I, I want to have a good amount of room. I don't want it to be congested. Um, I just got to be careful and do a lot of fine tuning. Speaking of the fine tuning, I'm so glad I did and I'm so glad I tested as I went along because me the way I normally am, I like to kind of push through things as you probably know already, um, but here I didn't. Um, but man, you got to be careful. I, I tested the freight trains, the freight trains were going pretty good. Um, but as soon as I, I tested the passenger train, which man, I'm so glad I did. The passenger train, I had some huge problems and it was getting those full length scale uh, passenger cars through it. I'll show you them right here, right now. Um, these guys right here, I had a heck of a time getting these guys to go up. Uh, 24 inch uh, radius, I thought would be plenty. I thought 22 would even be fine for these, but no. 24 inch radius is the absolute minimum of these, plus the pull up the hill was a nightmare. I had to make sure my track was lightning straight and true and good. I shouldn't say straight, curved, but I had to make sure that, that radius was perfect. I also had to make sure that where my rail joiners are, Everyone I had to go around and hand spike to get it back into gauge. Any slight, slight little kink on those rail joiners, not happening. They weren't taking it, they were derailing. As we are right now, I've got it running pretty good. I'm really happy with it. I've been going, I'm able to go up and I'm able to go down. I can't back a passenger train up the hill. It pushes, it's too much weight on the cars and pushes the middle car off, which I don't plan on doing anyways, but could use a little more tweaking. Um, but as far as that goes, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, so yeah, like I said, test as you go, be very careful um, because getting in here after can be quite difficult. It can be done. It's not the end of the world, but I mean, I really recommend uh, doing that. So that's that folks. I think we're going to leave it at that. Um, over on this end, we're at the stage now where we're at the bridge level. So this is the level where the, the bridge is going to come out where I was talking before it comes, it's going to swing out here. Um, and you're just going to see this bridge, this nice bridge scene in here. All this is going to be basically covered and painted like a backdrop and blended in with the scenery. It should be a pretty cool scene, but it's a big reason why I want to make sure this thing is working absolutely flawless because I'm telling you right now climbing under here even you know I'm middle-aged but anybody older than me is definitely not gonna want to climb under there it's I it's a pain in the butt you can get in there you can get in there I'm, I am leaving it open to have access but man I don't want to be messing around with that um, I want to make sure it's running as smoothly as possible and like I said as of now we're looking pretty smooth so folks, uh, if you like that, please hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks so much for stopping by. We'll see you on the next one. As always, happy model railroading. Stay creative. See you later, my friend. Bye-bye.